Thank you very much, Stuart. And I may please now call on stage Colin Fitzpatrick, co-founder and commercial director of We Are Jam. Okay. Ushwal Suri, chief revenue officer for Fornova. <laughs> and Celine Atayeva, and she's a student with the Swiss International Scientific School here in Dubai. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much, um, Stuart, for the great keynote. Colin, um, before we start going to introduce ourselves, we'll have a poll on the app. So in the meantime, if everybody can please take a look in the app, the questions that we have logged are to see um, how many in the audience are using AI once or twice a week, or if, the, you know, if you say now, without AI, I can't live anymore. And then we'll, take the, um, we'll look at the poll later on. So now we just take a few minutes to introduce ourselves. So Colin, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, thank you for having me. Great to be here, everyone. My name is Colin Fitzpatrick. Um, I'm an AI consultant, and I help businesses with their strategy into the future to make sure that they're effectively utilizing artificial intelligence for competitive advantage and additional revenue uh, into the future. My background is I've worked for tech companies all my life, Oracle, Dell, Salesforce, HubSpot. So I've been around an awful long time. I'm just a, a very passionate person about emerging technologies. I started a Web3 business um, in the area of NFTs and metaverse, which at the time were the very, very big, significant thing. Um, and now, uh, AI has really taken over as the, you know, this new subject that everyone is, is really super crazy about. But it's not just another wave. This is something very, very, very significant. And as soon as I saw that, I saw a massive opportunity to help businesses understand and decomplexify how they can basically get on board. And we can talk about this a little better, uh, a little later, but, you know, there's an awful lot of confusion and really fear around it, and I, I really think there's no need to do that. I think it's going to make everyone's lives significantly better, and for the people who really do take the time to uh, understand it and to see how their, their business can really utilize AI, it's going to be fantastic, Excellent. and that's hopefully what we can talk about today. Thank you very much. Ushwal? Uh, I'm part of Purnova. We are a technology company that works with hotels, airlines, of car rental companies, so everyone pretty much in the travel, uh, travel industry. Uh, I lead their customer um, and revenue teams, um, being part of the hospitality tech side since the last decade. Before that, um, I was actually also with Dell uh, and um, a few other technology companies before that. I think uh, one of the shifts on AI, and I think I'm very excited to be part of the panel, um, is how um, taking your earlier court um, that the learnings from what you get from outside the industry um, are 100% more and higher and how we can apply that to the uh, travel industry. And that's kind of what we have started seeing, especially with a lot of our customers on the airline side um, and the car rental industry side and how we can sort of bring that into the hospitality side of things. So very excited about that. Excellent. Thank you. And Celine, very warm Hello. welcome to you. Hello, good morning. My name is Selina Taiva, and I'm a student, a high school student at the Swiss International School Dubai. And I'm here to offer my vision on how I think AI will be extremely beneficial in the future in the hospitality sector. I'm very passionate about technology and AI. I'm currently doing AI research on medical conditions and how machine learning can help identify its development. I'm also learning to code and making algorithms with AI on how to detect fake news online. So very great to be here. I'm 17 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, can we take a quick look at the poll to get an understanding on who is using AI, please? All right, then we'll park the poll for a minute and we'll take a look at it once we have finished the, um, the questions. So Colin, maybe let's just take a step back and see, you know, what is I, AI other than ChatGPT? You know, where if, if I haven't heard about AI before, or I know what AI is, but I haven't used it for my day to 
day to day, what would your advice be? Where is it that I start? What training courses are there available that I can take? Sure, okay. So the fundamental basis is that AI is the simulation of human intelligence. And the reason ChatGPT really shot to the forefront is not because it was invented brand new. AI has been around for 10 years, and probably most of your businesses are using some form of AI or machine learning, and we've all used AI, you know, Amazon recommendations, what Netflix says to you, any Snapchat filters, that's all AI. It's, it's been around for a very long time. But one of the technologies, such as, you know, there's machine learning, there's deep learning, but there's also um, natural language processing. And that, to me, was the big gap, is why ChatGPT came in because it's for the first time that we can now talk to computers the way we talk to each other, and it can understand us, and suddenly, you know, we can now have this human-like conversation. That's the big change, and that's what you're going to see. All software was really going to change. It's going to take over. I call AI software 2.0 because it's going to infiltrate into everything else. Now, ChatGPT, or 3.5, is version 3.5. They had a 1, they had a 2, they had a 3 but no one ever heard about it until they built this simple little interface and you can ask it a question and you can get the answer. It's such a big deal because previously we've been thinking about we have an idea in our head, we crush it down to a few words, we put it into Google and then we try and find the answer from searching the pages and now we can just get that answer. So forgetting about the poll, can I just have a hands up? Who has used ChatGPT? Okay, fantastic. Who uses it on a weekly basis? Excellent. Who uses it on a daily basis? That is actually really impressive. When I've done this before, it's, a, if it, it's an awful lot less. So I, I'm, I'm very... Um, Maybe an honest group. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, this is, this is, this is great. The, look, as I said, it's, there's plenty of courses out there. There's ones from Microsoft, ones from IBM, there's all over the place. But the best way you can do is just do it. Um, and I'm very, like, if anyone's on LinkedIn, please follow me. I post about this all of the time, and I'm always giving, you know, tips and, and advice. Because on the way down here, I was on my phone while driving using the ChatGPT app in audio mode. And you talk to it like a person. And I was just asking it for examples on, you know, how can I best relate to this audience? And, you know, how is it really going to impact hospitality? And I would highly recommend it that you really try and forget about Google and use this whenever you can, because it is a completely transformational technology. And when you get the mindset change into understanding how it's going to help you personally by using it every day, then you can understand how it can help you in your job every day, and then you can get a better understanding of how you can help your organization use it out into the future. You'll understand it's going to be your best friend. And when I say friend, I really mean that, because we were having this conversation just back there two minutes ago. It is going to infiltrate into the fact that I think, you know, these large language models and these, you know, GPTs, every business is going to have one into the future. And also every person is going to have one, because it's going to be on your phone, and you're going to talk to it in your earphone. It's going to be like a personal assistant. It's going to be like a, an advisor. And it's going to be like a friend. And in a couple of years, this will be completely normal. Talking to a digital person right now might make you seem like kind of crazy, but the lines are blurring between what is synthetic and what is human. Thank you very much. Um, Ushbal, in, in your area and when you work with the hotels, what's your advice in terms of automating processes you know, across the commercial functions? Um, to use AI to make their processes more seamless? Um, so I, I guess the biggest challenge in our industry um, is uh, harmonizing data. Um, and whether you look at ChatGPT or any other LLM, BARD, or anything else, fundamentally, the, all they are is they're data machines. Um, and um, I, I guess the first thing that we discuss with our customers and continuously discuss with our customers is how do you harmonize data? How do you become data friendly? Data is boring, uh, unfortunately. Um, but how do you become data friendly? So the first step towards becoming AI compliant or using AI in, in your um, ecosystem is how do you get friendly with data? How do you ingest large amounts of data? ChatGPT version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is basically, you know, they, when they launched, they said, we have all internet history, 
till 2019, then 2020, and so on and so forth. So they're ingesting a lot of data. So how do you become friendly with data? How do you say, okay, I need more and more and more of data um, and harmonize that data across our organization? That's sort of step one. Um, Sam Alban said we are in the age of prediction. Um, and automation without harmonizing your data and building your ecosystem to ingest more and more of data will not do, uh, will not lead you to building or ingesting or implementing artificial intelligence. So that's the first step. Um, then is uh, basically people sort of getting used to it, right? So automation also means um, change in mindset, change in adaptability, and that's something, it's human nature not to change. No matter what we say here, no matter how people do it, unless there's a big transformative nature, you know, um, Zoom or um, Teams or virtual or, you know, Cisco WebEx were around 15 years ago, but till COVID didn't happen, people really didn't get used to online virtual meetings. Chat GPT, as Colin mentioned, has been around for a long time. Large language models have been around for a long time. But till that explosion didn't happen, people didn't interact with AI. And I think that's kind of basic what we need to do in each organization that is adapting to AI is how do you sort of build that culture? How do you say, how do revenue managers say, we've been talking about this, I, I've heard you talking about this, uh, for a long time is how do you revenue managers say, we are not revenue managers, we are data scientists. Once revenue teams, commercial teams understand this, that they are data first, then you can build your roadmap towards AI. And I'll give you one anecdote before I pass on. Um, so if, if any one of you follow, buy stocks or look at stock trading and so on, um, McDonald's, Coke, um, and um, uh, obviously IBM. Now, uh, they're all sort of known for different, they're in different industries, they're known for different things. At the, um, in between Jan, Feb, and March in 23, during their annual sales calls, conference calls to analysts, the CEOs of all three of them said, we are a data company. Imagine McDonald's saying we are a data company or Coke saying we are a data company. That, that's a statement, right? Uh, obviously, a few years down the line, they'll say we are an AI company. That basically means that, look, we are going to personalize the guest journey, we are going to price as per uh, each guest, individual guest, it's not standard anymore. Uh, and I think that's where um, if hotels, I, I love to see, you know, hospitality companies stand up and say, well, we are a data company as well. OTAs do it all the time. And I think once we reach there, um, that's uh, what we are working with our customers to say, what's the journey to get there? How do you harmonize data? How do you ingest a large amount of data? How do you ask for more? And then, you know, what kind of machine learning do you apply to, for your part towards AI? Yeah. Um, Stuart, you deal with a large um, customer base, you know, virtually, but then also in person. And how have you utilized the data to dissect what the customer is looking for? to allow your team to um, focus on the human interaction, but at the same time give them the convenience of doing their fitness classes um, from anywhere in the world that they are? The advantage we have is that we're able to track participants that enter the digital class or a digital room or a digital experience. And we track how long they stay in a particular workout or how long they stay online. And then we start to determine, similar to Netflix, where we've been using that technology for years, serving us the product that we want to see. So we identify that certain individuals may particularly like yoga or boxing. So we will obviously serve them that content. But what is interesting is that um, globally, the uh, statistics have come out that 76% of gym goers do two workouts at home a week and three in the gym. So they're doing those workouts digitally. Um, this has been a trend before COVID. Um, what COVID did was it accelerated, did a little bump up and then settled down a little bit. But when we look at generation um, 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 Z we, and we look at generation Y, they've adopted this concept long before and 
the growing up with the device in their hand. So when they're training, the device goes with them as well to the club and we're able to track that data. They connect it through heart rate devices or they log the workout because they wanna see what their workout is for the day. We also track nutrition and we track steps um, and this allows us to see how engaged the individual is. Um, and then obviously the next phase to that is leveraging AI to more suggestions that are curated specifically for them. Thank you very much. Uh, Celine, I find it fascinating with what you do, you know, at 17, and thank you very much for joining us on, on stage here. I was speaking to my son the other day, who's only eight, but then he asked me this question, so, so Mama, when you were young, when you were a child, during medieval times, how did you call your parents if you needed something, you know? And I was just like, okay, so that's how ancient it must sound when I'm talking about that, you know, in the early days we had a black and white television, that I didn't have cell phone or iPads when I was growing up, that we had three channels before the satellite dishes came, and, you know, it's, and I'm not even that old. But, you know, how do you utilize um, AI in your day-to-day -day life? And where do you, you know, what tools are you using in order to search for your activities that you're planning or, you know, for vacation planning? And where do you see, or, you know, what, what is your, what are your top tips for the audience to bear in mind for the future customer than once you start traveling um, with your family? So, actually, before I answer this question, I want to pose a question to the audience, okay? And this specifically goes out to CEOs or hotel managers or anyone in a management position, okay? I couldn't find the physical version, so I have a printed one out. But does anyone recognize what this is? The prehistoric device. <laughs> I had right. one. So my question, <laughs> my question is, I, I'm not sure how this works, but my question is, how were you able to manage a whole business and fulfill all of your hospitality duties with only this back in the day. <laughs> How did you do it without? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, how did you do it without cutting into your profit or without having a really large workforce, right? And think about the present now where you have just a simple iPhone or Samsung, Android, anything that can schedule meetings for you. You can meet people face to face that are not in the vicinity of you. You can access the whole internet right at your fingertips. And just think about the efficiency the development of technology has brought. And what I'm trying to pose is the importance of AI moving forward because I think the same development will occur when people begin to realize the power of AI and efficiency. And I can actually give a few examples because I engross AI in, into my life quite a lot. Like practically my entire life is managed by artificial intelligence now. So for example, for my Google Calendar, I use an app called Reclaim, which is an AI tool that schedules everything for me. So actually, I'll input my habits and I'll find the perfect time of the day when I don't have any conflicting events to schedule everything for me. So I can just wake up and look at my day and I already know what's coming ahead and I know everything I have to do will be fulfilled. Or for example, a platform, it's called Pentium. I upload a PDF version of my textbook in there and what it does is it makes me notes gives me summaries, makes flashcards, test questions, basically uses the principles of active recall and effective learning to ensure that I learn this content without spending hours and hours writing notes and rereading the same things and learning very passively. And of course, social media is probably one of the biggest AI tools that I use because social media is essentially just one big algorithm, right? You have the natural language processing, you have visual recognition, it's all parts that make up social media. And um, what I think about hospitality specifically, I think they can definitely implement this idea of having a personalization algorithm. And just to give some background information, when you are on any social media platform, like for example, I'm gonna use TikTok as an example because of the videos. There's two main components that are working, right? The natural language processing is essentially means a computer can understand what you're saying in English, right? Not in code. And not only can it interpret it, it can also understand the context. And same with visual recognition, you can have an image, for example, and machine learning will learn to identify the object in the image and correlate it to you. So for example, if a video is 60 seconds long, it'll uh, take statistics of, will you watch the whole video? Will you only watch a short segment of it? How long does it take before you scroll? What time of day do you usually go on social media, right? When is your high screen time? What day of the week? 
who do you usually send your posts to? What kind of videos do you interact with and like with? And all of this AI analytics is used to tailor what comes forward, right? So that you essentially stay on the app, but also so that it's a comfortable experience for you. So you're enjoying it and getting as much dopamine hits as possible, right? This instant gratification. And this principle can be applied in hospitality, I believe, because um, by having something personalized. So for example, you have um, an AI algorithm that knows what temperature you like your water, whether you like it uh, still or whether you like it sparkling, whether you like your room to be cold or warm, whether you like your pillow to be stiff or calm and so on, and have the perfect setting and be perfectly comfortable when you enter any room because the AI understands this attention to detail. This will make you feel valued, more comfortable. That's the essence of hospitality, essentially. And these little tweaks, like, um, for example, as mentioned, the expedited check-ins and check-outs and having things that are routine increase human value because you no longer have people who, for example, are working at customer service and have to spend their entire day helping people debug how to change their password, right? Uh, by having an AI that can do that for you, the humans are actually freed up to use their time more valuably, to help people who need emotional help, or for example, things that require cognitive ability. So adding this AI into hospitality, I believe will only, will only enhance who, what you have so far, the job you're doing, and the environment you're creating. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think the key takeaway from here, I mean, amongst many things, um, <laughs> you got my head spinning now. Um, but in terms of embracing AI to make things easier for the customer, that then allows the, the staff to spend more time with the customer in terms of hum human interactions, to go on to excursions, etc. Colin, from your line of work, you know, when we spoke earlier, there seems to be a fear factor um, of the more I embrace technology, the more I embrace AI, is my job at risk? You know, in terms of, so, so, so you know, from, from your side, what's your, what, what's your advice in order to overcome that? Well, there's a famous phrase in the industry, which is, AI won't take your job, but someone skilled in using AI might. And that's probably the, the best one, because um, I, I believe, and, and as I was saying to you earlier, we need to really lessen our reliance on these because we're, we're standing here and we're, we're tapping and you know it's just not it's just not good I mean if you saw there was something that came out a little while ago called a humane pin and it sits here and you don't need a, a phone and it literally projects some data onto your onto your uh, onto your hand but you know you can listen to it and it listens to everything and it, and it tries to automate things at the end of the day um, everyone should be looking at how you can utilize AI to just speed up what you're doing, to automate manual and repetitive tasks, to take the menial jobs out, and to bring back the human connection. That's what we do. I mean, we spend so much time, we spend more time, you know, talking to people on our phones than actually face-to-face. -face. But I believe what AI is going to, it's, it's going to liberate and it's going to free us from having to do, do certain tasks You'll be able to tell your little assistant to go and do that booking or set up that meeting or find out that information or research this and will lead us to having more time to have a human one-to-one -one connection to actually get things done. And um, I, I also believe that from a, you know, a customer service perspective, it's very important, and I'm sure all of you people, all of you guys know that there are certain things that you absolutely want to automate and there are certain things that you don't. You need, you know, if it's a, a high-end concierge, that person wants someone that is trustworthy and knowledgeable to look after them, to give them recommendations to help them out. But there's certain times when I don't want to talk to a person. I just want to get my information or I just want to get something done and I don't want to have to pick up the phone and have a conversation with someone to get towels. I just want to WhatsApp or, or go on the app. And you know the, the age of digital humans is really coming in now. And this, I've been working on a project over the last little while, building a virtual 3D conversational avatar that you can just take out your phone, you can have a conversation, or there could be an iPad in the room. I mean, the Win in Las Vegas has uh, Alexa in every room, so you can just talk to it and you know get requests, things done. That is coming to, you know, essentially bring a more uh, virtual human-like aspect to that where I can talk to a, an AI, it's connected into the systems, it can find out all of the information, it can request, it can uh, make recommendations for me. And I think that's amazing because sometimes I, I, I just want what, what I want right now without having to deal with someone. 
but that frees up more time for the people who are like, no, now I want to speak to a person and I want a more personalized, human-to-human, one-to-one connection and I want that recommendation and I want to feel special. Because if empathy is required, that's where you want a human. If you just want the data and you want the, the task completed, you know, that's where AI is going to be able to help. To, to enhance, I was using various AI tools recently. I had a presentation to do, and then I put the remainder of the, I put the presentation that I've developed into AI just to enhance it. Sometimes I use AI to, to draft the presentation, and then I enhance it. It really depends on what you need it for, if you need logos, etc. I mean, it's endless. But, you know, like you said, it's, you have to start somewhere. You have to learn about it. What I had to learn about ChatGPT, it's like with a revenue management system, it's garbage in and garbage out. It's the more information that you can give to ChatGPT on what you want, who the audience is. Today's questions, they have all been written um, by ChatGPT, and I got a list of 45 questions by saying who the audience is, who the panelists are, and what are we talking about um, to achieve that. So before I invite the panelists for closing remarks, I would like to see if there are any questions from the audience. Take a couple of summary on their questions, but okay. there's a very interesting question and I want to put it uh, on the panel. So this is a question for Celine. And so far being the youngest speaker in the conference, so I'm a broke for that. And the question is, how do you envision a hotel in 10 years from now? Okay, so I want to point out that I'm a future consumer, right? But the key difference is that I'm in a different generation that was brought up completely differently. And the main term that people use to describe my generation is digital native as opposed to digital immigrants because we were born, as uh, mentioned, glued on our phones. So how I envision the hotel industry, I have very big visions. I have, um, I expect in 20 years or over, we might be using biometric data instead of our phones to be accessing hotels in and out. But the main three priorities that I think will occur in the next 10 years is an increase in efficiency, in personalization, and in sustainability. So I envision that people will no longer have to stand in hotel queues to be able to register, they can check in the same way like the Dubai eGate works, where the airport essentially has all of your biometric data and you don't have to stand in a long queue, you can easily scan and go through. I feel like the same principle will be adapted to the hospitality industry. And it's recently a trend that uh, hospitality seems to catch up with the trends a bit further uh, later than other industries. But I think that with the surge in AI and its impact on efficiency, I don't think hotel or in hospitality industry in general will want to be left behind. Yeah. Thank you. And the last question is, I think, you know, with, with the AI coming into the market, there is a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of a threat feeling in, in many industries. What is going to happen to our jobs, right? So the future generation in hospitality in terms of job opportunities, how that technology will handle this? To anyone from the panel. I would like to take that one. What, what, can you repeat the last bit of that so, question, please? How is technology will affect the future generation in hospitality in terms of job opportunities? Um, there's a great quote, which is, I think, from Warren Buffett, and he said that AI is a little bit like refrigeration. He said the people who invented refrigeration, sure, they made some money. But the real people to make money out of refrigeration were Coca-Cola, who used this platform to create a completely new product and sell it to pretty much everyone across the world. And that is what AI, AI is like the internet or electricity, that it will enable things that we just cannot imagine right now. So like we talked about earlier, uh, in 1995, I started exploring the internet as a 15-year-old and kind of went, oh my God, this is incredible. But no one really understood the jobs that were going to be created around a social media manager or all the different web designers or all of the different businesses and platforms that are built on top of that. And it's exactly the same. The other thing is I like to compare AI to like the printing press, okay? Before the invention of the Gutenberg printing press in 1660-something, a book would cost the equivalent of thousands of dollars 
in today's money because it was usually the Bible and it was hand-scribed by monks. And then the printing press comes out and you can get a book for a few dollars. And I think the exact same thing is going to happen across now. Hopefully it'll happen with food and energy and healthcare and massively you know, lower the costs of the things to, to bring all of our lives drastically up. Because most of us today have a far better lifestyle than a king a couple of hundred years ago. And the same thing will happen. So what I believe is, is that it will free us up to do more of the things we like, probably go on more holidays, which will mean you know, more hotels and more leisure activities and more jobs surrounding that. What we're gonna see is not just AI doing it from a digital sphere, but you know, robots will be walking among us in about five years. You may have seen the Tesla uh, Optimus and you may have seen the um, Boston Dynamics Atlas. And, you know, those things are going to be taking some of the menial tasks away, freeing us up to do, you know, what we love to do more and what brings the human connection back. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Stuart, from your side, closing remarks on how to embrace technology without using, losing the human touch? I think the biggest thing here is um, know your customer. Oh, and I think that everybody wants... Um, things to be more personalized and hyper-personalized. And I think the biggest thing when, when, you, when we're contacted or, or let's use the word approach from marketing or from communication, whether it's uh, in-person or telephone call or, tech or, or through, through an app, is they don't know you and it's offensive. And I think we, we find that offensive and I think the, gener the, other, the generations younger than us won't accept it. You need to know your customer, you need to know what they want, you need to know what they like, and you need to know where they're going to go next. You have to learn to understand them better than they know themselves, and you have to be able to suggest and recommend, just like Colin was saying now, instead of going to the human, if I choose, when I check in, that everybody, the, the system knows that I, I check straight in, at the moment, when I select that in a hotel reservation, my likes, my dislikes, with my loyalty club or my program, they'll still put me next to the lift. Now, I find that frustrating. When the, when the, when the, when the, um, um, the business understands who I am, they will make sure that everything is booked for me, I have the option to change or cancel, as opposed to leaning in the whole time. But when you talk about the human touch, that's never going to leave. We're finding in the fitness industry, for example, that this is obviously growing in, in multiple parts of the world, the human touch and the human interaction, because you can never break that. There are some experiences that can never, can never be replaced, but importantly, the, we attend a lot of locations and we go to events in order to have the human touch and have high touch. We just want tech to improve it for us. Thank you. Colin? I, I completely agree. I think that was perfectly said. Uh, understanding, like what I said earlier, is you know what to automate and what not to. Where I just want the information, and I don't want to have to ha be on hold and have a conversation. And I think AI is going to really solve a lot of the customer service in, uh, industry problems. I mean, some of the biggest companies in the world, like the telcos, you you dread calling them up and how, I'm going to be on hold and how long for, and then I'll speak to some guy halfway across the world and he's it's his third day on the job and he doesn't understand me and then I get transferred around. All of those things will be gone because for certain parts of customer service, it just will be replaced by that top line of AI. And if it can't solve your job, your problem, it will pass you on to someone who will have a perfect summary of what you've just said to get the problem solved. And understanding that difference between where the person just wants the information or the task completed. Um, like what you said, the, the AIs are, the, the next step of AI is customization and knowing me. Because I go into uh, ChatGPT right now and it doesn't know who I am, it doesn't know where I live, it doesn't know what job I have, it doesn't know what I'm doing next week, but that's all about to change. And then the integrations into you know, either the booking systems, the revenue management systems, anything like that, all of those integrations are going to come so that you can give this hyper-personalized approach. Um, and I would just advise everyone to really 
you know, take note of that and think about where you can start to integrate that because being at the forefront of all of this will give you such an advantage in the market. And that's what I do day to day is I help businesses understand how they can gain competitive advantage. Um, IBM had a survey the other day of 3,000 CEOs and they said that the companies who will have the best outcomes in the future are the ones that will best implement the, the most um, innovative AI tools today. Because if you're at the back and everyone is trying to catch up, you're in real trouble. But if you're um, at the forefront of trying to implement this now, that's where the real benefits will come. So that's my, my closing <coughs> thoughts to Thank you Thank you. Ushval, from your side. I, well, um, I would uh, be, uh, differ a little bit from my panelists here. I think uh, AI will revolutionize, but it is still way off. Um, just like any other technology that comes in, the buzz that gets created uh, is a lot higher. By the time the technology gets adopted, customized and so on, it takes its own sweet time. So I do agree with, with Colin that um, you should be at the forefront. Um, I would suggest that people get themselves, everyone said they're using chat GPT. I would say just try, keep on trying new things. Don't take the big bold steps. Just don't start with big, bold steps, but try everything new. I mean, people should stop saying, uh, I'm good with what I have. If people start uh, adopting to new things, try new things. Doesn't mean you have to do it, just try it. And if you keep on trying, you will find the right path and you will be at the forefront. But try new things would be what I would suggest. All right, thank you, Celine. One minute, closing yeah, remarks from your side. We had the gong. <laughs> I'll make it fast. I couldn't have said it better myself. I think the most important thing is to adapt. Because if you won't do it now, someone else will. Maybe later, maybe it'll be another generation, but it could be you. And I know that there are many hotel chains who have already started incorporating AI. I think Hilton has virtual concierges that have begun in some areas. And I think um, Marriott's as well are using virtual concierges. So. It's extremely, extremely interesting, and people are beginning to change. And I think yesterday it was also highlighted a lot how there's going to be initial unacceptance of this change, but it's the most important thing right now is to adapt, is to realize that this is the future and this is where we're heading, and it'll just make everything for you significantly better. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much to the um, panelists. Thank you very much for the audience to listen. Thank you. Big round of applause.